Welcome to ET Studios at the Economic Times GCC Growth Summit 2025 at Hyderabad. At today's panel, we're spotlighting engineering excellence and digital innovation redefining manufacturing for the future. India's GCCs in engineering and manufacturing are at the forefront of driving digital innovation, smart manufacturing and sustainable industrial practices. This discussion will delve into how these centers are enabling global R&D, process optimization and next-gen automation. I have two esteemed leaders here to steer us through this conversation. Please join me in welcoming Nanda K. Lakaraju, who's the Managing Director, Carrier Technologies India, and Raghavendra Vaidya, who's the MD and CEO, Daimler Truck Innovation Center India. Thank you so much for joining us here at ET Studios. Thank, Thank you. you. Glad to be here. Excellent. Let me start off with the first question. How are engineering and manufacturing GCCs driving innovation to meet the demands of a rapidly evolving global market? Um, so let me take a look at it from, from the product's perspective. Right? So if you take a look at most products in the world, they are going from a very traditional product to being a very connected, intelligent product. And when you look at that particular space, you know there's a lot of intelligence being built into the product, whether it's around connectivity, around controls, et cetera. And I think our GCCs have played a very central role in those kinds of areas. So I think in the, especially in the emerging areas where we are, where we are uh, seeing whether it's on artificial intelligence, machine learning, whether it's on IoT, et cetera, I think there's a lot of transformation that's happening you know, across for our products. So I think the future is about getting more value out of products. Yeah. So I think that's really where the GCCs are playing a, a really good role. And India with a strong tech backbone really is at the forefront of this innovation for sure. Absolutely. I think it started with, uh, with IT and the technology mm -hmm. side, but I think we are rapidly going into the engineering space where there's a lot more spend you know, also globally. Yes, and so. the sort of cross-collaboration definitely helps. Would you agree? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, just to take a different dimension, mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the disadvantages most, if not all, GCCs have is the products that we work on, our engineering teams work on, are the products that we don't sell in India. And that's a disadvantage because you don't get to see the product, you don't get to see the manufacturing and so on. But that disadvantage is turned into an advantage purely using the technology. Mm. Like how do you make manufacturing better without being next to the manufacturing products and plants? So what we are doing today is building digital twins of our manufacturing uh, plants where you create a digital equivalent of what's actually in the production plant, and then you do what-if scenarios, right? For example, if you, you, if you introduce a new product, do you really need a new line? Mm. Or can you accommodate in the same line? And that cannot be done physically. It can be, but it's expensive like crazy. So we use digital technology to build a digital twin, do what-if scenarios, and give this back to the production plants. So what is a disadvantage is turned into an advantage and a huge productivity saving for the business uh, purely by pushing the boundary on digital. So I think the common theme here is how do you push the boundary on digital and things that are done traditionally physically are done digitally. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's what we are hugely focused on. Well, absolutely, right? By focusing on a digital transformation, you are increasing operational uh, efficiency and also sustainability. Would you agree? Yeah, no, operational efficiency, sustainability is a huge focus because if you have to stand up a new line, you need more power, you need more steel, you need more aluminum, and then, you know, you're adding to the carbon footprint. That's a huge focus area. But I think it has gone well beyond efficiency. It is increasing the bottom line, it is increasing the top line, and most importantly, it is reducing the time to market. Hmm. If you can readjust the current line to introduce a new product, you can get the product out in, in lesser time. And that's hugely advantageous from a competition standpoint. So I think the, the advantages of pushing the boundary on digital have gone way beyond efficiencies. It sounds like a systemic overhaul. In fact, uh, this it, 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 if you look at sustainability, right, that Mr. Vaidya talked about, I think sustainability is also at the core of a lot of work that the companies mm. are doing. So, for example, a lot of companies are pushing you know, their net zero initiatives or how much uh, you know, gigatons of reduction of CO2 that they will do. I mean, we've signed up for taking out a gigaton by 2030 and a net zero by 2050. So there's a lot of work that kind of happens. So it's not just pulling a number, but I think there are science-based targets. There's mm. scope one, two, three emissions, what happens in factories, what happens in products. 
And some of these products actually last for a long time. Like, you know, our products can be 12 or 15 years. Your automobiles can be multiple years in the, on the road. So how do you really drive this ecosystem? Information becomes key. Choices in manufacturing become key. You know, what can you do in the manufacturing to make you are manufacturing a more green manufacturing mm. and, and more sustainable. So a lot of work happening you know, on this initiatives. So. And especially with GCCs, how do you ensure collaboration between uh, the local and global uh, force to accelerate product cycles? I, I'll, I'll go back to what Mr. Sure. said. I think because I think this is important, right? So a lot of the work that's happening in GCCs mm. is, is inherently global in nature. Mm. And for those companies, let's say, which have got uh, products or factories within India, there are centers that are doing India for India. And then the GCCs are really global. So GCCs have got lots of talent, but they're very focused on some of the emerging areas mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, uh, the, the newer products, which may or may not be always available locally. What they don't typically have in GCC is marketing, sales, mm -hmm. uh, product management, service. These areas are not there in GCCs. Mm -hmm. In the local side, you have all of these areas. What you may not have is really access to global technology or access to what's happening you know, with the bird's eye view of the world. That's where I think the true collaboration comes. So for example, we have a center in Gurgaon which is focused more on India. We have a center here in Hyderabad which is focused globally. So the more we bring them together, I think there is a lot of synergy between the sites. I think we can learn from each other. So as, as he said, you know, we don't have to necessarily send everybody. I think digital mm -hmm. tools have done an, a tremendous job of bringing that knowledge to our teams. But sometimes there is no substitute for actually seeing a product you know, in action, touching it, feeling it. And I think that's where there's a lot of, uh, uh, and, and a lot of our teams who have worked in, or working in GCCs in India have an inherent inner desire to do something for our local uh, products. So I think there is a, an opportunity and I think there's more to be done, frankly. You know. Well, absolutely. Despite the number of GCCs here, I think there is still so much the market uh, can be served by in so many different ways. Yeah. No, I think it's it's one of the biggest challenges. Like, uh, how do you get the global and local mm -hmm. teams to work as one team? Because at the end of the day, we're all working towards the single goal, which is to make the company more profitable, get the products online, and make the customers successful. So if there is this local and global mix, I would say that's in a very lucky space, right? But there are areas like ours, like the trucks that uh, our teams design, they're not here. And trucks are very different in India compared to in Europe sure. and US. But what we try to do is, uh, we try to not make this distinction that there is a headquarters and there is an offshore location. Uh, we try to make, you know, this another location of Daimler truck, right? And we try to have global teams come here and, and mingle with them. We also do some things like, you know, we get the trucks over to India. Mm. And we built uh, what we call as a teardown facility. So we run campaigns where the global experts come here and our engineers and global experts completely tear down the truck, including the engine, thousands of parts, and they put it back together. And that experience is invaluable. So we are trying to discover every day how to bridge this gap. Mm. The gap will remain, but it is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And the more smaller it gets, the more value you can add to the business if you understand the market, the strategy, the customer, and the products better. Because tech talent, nobody even questions that for India anymore. I do have tech talent. Oh, of course we do have tech talent. We have people with huge trade craft and depth. But then we bring them in and then give them the market, product, customer, uh, uh, you know, data and knowledge. And that's where the magic happens. You know, this teardown project sounds very fascinating indeed. Now, that's something I'd like to see on Instagram, hmm. for instance, you know. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I mean, we, we, we actually built this teardown facility in, in, in a university hmm. uh, along with that. And we also include their final year students and their, their master degree students because they only see the engine drawings. And, and Mercedes-Benz engines that we use in our trucks, these are the most complex engines. So we get the experts who have built those engines, they come here, they completely take it apart, including the cylinders and, 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 and the seals and all that, and they put it back. And what they learn in that 12, 15 weeks of campaign is just invaluable. So we continuously try to innovate mm -hmm. on how to bridge the gap, right? And I think in the last 15 years, what we've done in some of the engineering GCCs is, is truly phenomenal. And one proof point of that I would like to say is I've been in this for 20, more than 20 years now. Every time somebody says this cannot be done in India, there is somebody five years later who is proving that wrong. 
right? And this is how we push the boundary. I think this the is learning, how GCC yeah, the, the is the learning value. agility of the teams here. I think there is something to speak for that. <coughs> I think I agree with that. It's not about. It's not just enough to do a tear down mm. and create an idea. How do you take that idea yep. and fructify it into a real solution? Take it through the manufacturing process, take it through the design process, take it to the market process. That's where that domain knowledge plays a lot of role. And that's mm -hmm. where the resilience matters. So, and I think that's where the innovation is coming. So yeah. look, we have some things that are working very well and we got some things that are a challenge, but we will figure out a way mm -hmm. to get this thing done. Yeah. Well, leaders uh, such as yourself, who have so much passion and expertise, I'm sure it trickles down from the two of you, uh, for instance. Well, but I, I would also like to say, yes, leadership is good, but I have to give it to our engineers. They never back down from a challenge, right? And if you tell them, oh, you don't understand, they will find a way. <laughs> and I think the hunger that our engineers have to do more and the resilience they have to bridge the gap I think this is this is the biggest yeah. USP for us yeah. to become the world's yeah. capital of how to do engineering. You, 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 you know, if you tell something, hey, look, this is this is not possible. Yeah. Our engineer says, no, I don't agree that it's not possible. Yeah. It just merely means it's not been done before. Yeah. So the the mindset I think exactly. matters, you know, from an engineering standpoint. That's great to so. hear. It sounds like Indian engineers <laughs> can truly bend the laws of physics, even, you know, and that sort of grit and determination yeah. to just get it done. Right, and uh, now through the course of this conversation, we're at that point where uh, you know we cannot escape AI. You know, it's a part of every conversation and every industry. So at GCCs at engineering and manufacturing, how are you integrating emerging tech such as AI, IoT, uh, keeping things on the edge? How are you going about it? Well, you know, we have lots of challenges we spoke about, but there is one advantage that only a GCC has, like in India, which is we get to see every nook and corner of the business. Mm. We get to see everything that's good, bad, and the ugly of the business. We have access to data that is created across the organizations because we work across geographies, across product lines. And this is exactly the, the recipe we need for making AI work because AI is about taking data, looking at the past trends, and predicting the future. So I think we are using that USP of knowing all of this. What do you do with that? And the access to data. And then, of course, we have the best data scientists in the world, right? So I think, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, so this advantage <coughs> only a GCC in India has, and I think we're making huge deal out of it, absolutely. Uh, but we're also creating a lot of value for the business. And we created a data and AI team which is globally responsible for driving AI for Daimler Truck. And there was very little argument where we should do it. Because only in India we have the, the engineers, the practitioners, and the computer science graduates who can bring all that together and make it happen. Putting your vantage point to good use indeed it sounds like. Yeah, and, and I think look, this, this space is emerging, and I think there's a lot more use cases that are uh, that are yet to come. But see, take a look at the world. The world, the products are changing quite rapidly. But you, you could have millions of air conditioners out there. You could have hundreds of thousands of chillers running. But what about all the service technicians? Do you have enough people out there to service our products? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know. So what can we do from a technology standpoint to make design for service easier for them? Mm -hmm. How do you use platform? In fact, we are trying to take a page out of the automotive playbook and get into more platforming, but how do you make life easier for people who touch our product, service our product? And I think that tail is a very long tail. You know, the product is in the factory for a day, but it could be there for 15 years in the field. So how do you maintain that? And what kind of technology can we give so that the right parts are there, the, you know, we have got condition-based maintenance, and you know, you've, got, you've got data centers, for example. You, know, you don't want to take those things down. So how do you make sure that you've got high availability, and how do you keep up with the pace of growth and use technology so that you, know, you have the right knowledge at the right time? So. Well, it sounds like you know, just keeping up, but actually leading this innovation and driving the transformation GCCs in India. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank it's you. been a great conversation. Uh, I've learned so much. I'm going to go back and, in fact, 
see see if I can catch some videos of that tear down. It sounds exciting we can, indeed. We and can get uh, you some some videos <laughs> of the tear down. They're, yeah. they're very very interesting to see. Yes, it yeah, sounds so. very interesting truly. And <coughs> thank you so much for joining thank us you. here thank at ET Studios. And thank you for watching and for more such insightful sessions. Please watch our other discussions at ET Studios at the Economic Times GCC Growth Summit 2025 at Hyderabad.